Hello, my name is Igor, and in this video I'm designing and 3D printing a toy again. Because a few weeks ago I was creating this roly-poly toy, so-called Devalyashka. And uh, my wife really liked it because she had this in her childhood. And she asked me, can I 3D print a Eula? What's Eula? After a quick search on the internet, I found out it's a spinning top toy. Okay, I created one in a Fusion 360. Very simple version, only three pieces, you have to screw it together. There are no metallic parts, everything is in plastic. Even you can place a piece of paper between two pieces and then you don't even have to glue it. And it's similar replaceable and it's spinning good. So I can, uh, it will spin maybe one and a half minutes approximately. But then uh, my wife told me that no, 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 the version she had in her childhood, um, you have to pump it. Pump. Another quick search on the internet and I find out, oh, that's a mechanical version. And that's a challenge now because the mechanical version with the coil is very hard to 3D print. You have to find the correct uh, pitch angle. And also another problem you have to solve is when you are pushing down the coil, uh, the torque has to be transmitted. But, but, but when you are stop pushing down, then uh, the holder in your hand is not rotating, only the top toy. This means uh, I need some kind of clutch which will transmit the torque only in one direction. And that's a really challenge now. Okay, I started with a sketch, but I'm so old that, and so old fashioned that I start my sketch on the paper. Then one of my daughters told me, come on dad, uh, don't be that old fashioned, use some electronic device. <laughs> then I took her tablet, you know, with a pen, and I draw this. I even uh, calculate the dimensions for my pitch because I want 60 degree pitch angle. And only after this I started with Fusion 360. I cannot talk about each design step I made because it would be too long. Instead I will talk about each 3D printed part. There are 10 parts here. I will talk about them separately because we cannot see when I try to make this, some objects transparent. Even in a session analysis it, it may be too complicated for the description. So let's talk about each part one by one. There is a bottom part. This is the part where this to top toy is rotating on. There is a hole inside for the main coil and uh, there is a thread for the set screw because with this set screw it will be connected to the upper part, the skirt. So this is a, basically this is only cylinder with the thread. And now let's see the skirt. This is the biggest part, 3D printing time, maybe six hours. So here you can see the hole and also the set for the uh, set screw. So here it will be connected to the lower part. Now, two more things I want to talk about because uh, this part will give the moment of inertia to the rotation. We need to add some weight uh, as far as possible from the center. This is why I made these holes for the M10 nuts. When I printed the first version, it was a little bit hard to put the nuts on this treat. Then I know, uh, learned that I never treat the printed treat, in the, including on the first layer. So in design, I added this small shape and I rotate it so uh, the treat basically doesn't start from the first layer but a little bit higher, and then it will be much easier to put these nuts on the trade. And uh, one more thing I want to mention here is this spiral. It is 0.2 millimeter layer height. This is the only object which you, you have to print it with 0.2 millimeter layer height. Everything else can be printed with the 0.15 millimeter. And if you change the color right here, then you don't have to color this because it will be printed in different color. I will show you that later. And on the top there is another thread because I wasn't sure that upper parts will be good and I don't want to print it everything again. So uh, this is another thread for connecting the nut holder. 
and in the nut holder there you can see this some kind of clutch which will allow the rotation the uh, torque only in uh, one direction because when you push it down the holder the the coil it has to transport the the rotation but when you stop pushing or you are pulling up then there cannot be the connect connection between these two parts otherwise it the holder will continue rotating with the uh, skirt and the main part Okay, inside this nut holder is the nut. You can see the lower part is also uh, prepared like for that clutch, so the torque will be translated only in one direction. And there is a hole for the coil. And inside this, ah yes, I want to show you that this nut is, uh, it can be seen in this session, analyze it better. So this is the, the nut. It can move inside this hole up and down. When you're pushing down, it will push. It will be pushed down, and the torque will be transmitted. If you stop pushing, it will move up, and uh, it will not rotating together with the main part. And inside this is the coil, the main part. There is 0.2 millimeter gap between nut and the uh, main coil so this should be enough to move freely inside this is the surface uh, let me turn this off so this is the surface to print on that's why i needed the, the other part the holder this, and uh, it is connected with this small set screw it can be 3d printed only you have to print it very slowly, otherwise there is no en not enough time between two layers to cool down. I made that error first time. And at the end of this coil, there is M6 thread, because here I have to put the bottom cap limiter. Um, this will block the coil to be pulled out. If this is not here, when you pull out it will accidentally you can pull out from the toy and it will stay in your hand so you have to put it back. So this is uh, the limiter which prevent this to pull, the, pull out from the toy. And this is how it looks like everything together in session analysis. So this is the part which moves up and down. When you this is the nut, this is the nut holder, this is the skirt, the bottom part. I will show you each part in a slicer. Okay, this is the bottom, bottom part, this is the direction of the printing. Every part can be printed without supports. This is the preview of the printing. If you want to make it stronger, you can raise the number of the perimeters. This is the cap. Uh, also has to be printed in this direction without support. This is the top of the holder. This is the nut and it also has to be printed in this direction. This is the preview of the printing. This is the nut holder. This is the printing position. Let's preview the printing. Okay, this is a screw coil, also has to be printed on this direction, this surface. I thought that I will need PTG here to be stronger, but with PLA it works perfectly. So this is the preview of the printing. To make this stronger, also don't forget to raise the number of the perimeters. 
this is a set screw for connecting uh, bottom part and the uh, skirt and this is a set screw to connect the coil and the top holder here I had the problem because uh, I was printing with normal speed but this is so small object that there is not enough time between layers to cool down so here I have to slow down to 60% speed printing speed and then it was uh, work correctly. The top cap, uh, this is the direction of the printing. And now the skirt. This is the bigger part, this will be printed 6 hours, but this is only part which has to be printed in 0 0.2 millimeter layer height. Now let's preview the printing. So it will start for this first layer and uh, as I mentioned the tree has to be uh, printed a little bit higher. This is important position, 10.2 mm layer height. Here you have to insert the color change and then this spiral will be printed in a different color. Then you don't have to color this with your hand or, or any other method and I will add another color change on 15 millimeters because everything will be red only the spiral and this smaller part will be in white in my case okay and this will be printed six hours so that's why I separate this because I don't want to print again everything if the knot or, or uh, coil it will not work in my case okay let's print now each part let's see that too
And now all we have to do is to put these 10 pieces together. Sometimes the coil don't want to go in immediately into the nut after the printing. That's because of some extra material on the edge of the coil. Theoretically there is 0.2 mm gap, so it should be easy to put in. Uh, but with uh, just uh, maybe half or one minute of work with the sandpaper, we will solve this problem. And about small treats, uh, I usually use standard treats in the design. This is the M6, so I can test it with the normal screw and the nut. Same. Because uh, here I can detect if there is some problem with the printing, like it was with the, the set screw. It was printed too fast and the uh, layers didn't have enough time to cool down. So I had to print that again. But this I detected using the normal uh, M6 screw with the printed version. This is now the clutch for the nut. Theoretically, if I would design some kind of spring inside it, which will automatically lift if it's not pushed down, then there wouldn't be the noise you will hear later. But I didn't want to use those metallic parts, which is hard to uh, find, it's not too standard. Oops, I forget to screw the nut holder into the skirt. And now let's uh, screw in those nuts, metallic nuts, for the weight and better moment of inertia because it will rotate much longer. Hmm. It was a little bit hard to tuck them in because it's not smart to start the thread with the first layer. I should start with the cylinder and later start with the thread. Of course, smaller cylinder. But it's in, let's test it. So, not bad. But my wife told me this is too short. To make this longer, I have to raise this part here. So it will be somewhere here and then I can extend this screw.
in design process I was using the smallest coil and after my wife told me that no it's too short it doesn't feel comfortable I, then I designed this longer one I think it's 30 millimeters longer for me this is the most comfortable but if you are using on the too slippery surface then it will slip it is a little bit hard to push down uh, without slipping and then I designed this third version and this one I will upload to the Thingiverse and with this it is most comfortable for using because it doesn't slip so easy from the surface and it's easier to push down let's put this quickly together Well, I hope you like this video and uh, I learned a lot from this project. I hope there was something new to you too. Thank you for watching and follow me to my next video. Bye.